بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's lesson which is the uh, unit 2 conversation Of course I think you know the theme uh, uh, or the, some of the, the vocabulary that will be used in the conversation because of the theme of this unit if you remember it Yes very good it's about food, about eating food, about also cooking food types of food, dessert and uh, the main dish also. So if you remember, uh, the title of this unit is, yes, very good, you are what you uh, eat. But before we do that, if you remember our previous lesson, the phrasal verbs here, which consists of two parts, the verb and the particle, just like pick at or pick on or throw out and so on. Also, there are some separable and some are non-separable. Some you can separate them and put uh, the noun or the pr pronoun between the verb and the particle and some you cannot separate them. For example here I say I ran into uh, Rima. You don't say I ran Rima into. You don't say I ran Rima into. You say I ran into Rima. You can't separate ran and into. I, you say also I ran into her, you don't say I ran her into, so you cannot separate ran into. Some examples of non-separable here, uh, call for, come from, look into, tire of, come across, go on, run into, turn out. And here is the separable, you can separate them and put the object between them. The chef cut, uh, cut up the steak, or you can say the chef cut the steak. Also we, uh, also, we took if a pronoun, if the object is a pronoun, that you must put it in the middle. The chef cut it up. So if it's a pronoun, you have to put it in the middle. Also, we took the three word phrasal verbs, not two words, three words. The verb, the, the particle, and the preposition. Just like here, catch up on, come down with, Drop out of, uh, look, uh, uh, load up on, take care, take care of. When your mother tells you to take care of your brother, this is a three-word phrasal verb. So jumping to today's lesson, uh, today's objectives: employ the real talk in a short conversation. Of course, we'll be learning new words here in the real talk. Set up dinner hosting with offering, accepting phrases. So, gourmet cook. Gourmet cook. Do you know what does it mean to be a gourmet cook? Who is a gourmet cook? Yes, a cook is someone who cooks something, of course, like a chef, maybe. So, what does it mean to a gourmet uh, cook here? Gourmet is someone who knows a lot about uh, 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 and appreciates fine food. So someone who cooks in the highest level. So someone who likes and cooks and also appreciate food. Again, gourmet is someone who knows a lot about and appreciates fine food. So he's the highest level of a, a cook or chefs. Are you a gourmet cook? Do you know someone who is do you like gourmet food? So are you a gourmet cook? Do you know a lot about cooking that you think yourself on the highest level and you cook fancy food? Do you know someone who is? Do you know someone who is a, a gourmet cook? Or the third question here, do you like gourmet food? Gourmet food, the fancy food. So this is, of course, is a matter of uh, preference and of course as long as uh, it is delicious we all uh, like it so now you're going to listen to a conversation uh, you're going to listen to a dinner table conversation about a wonderful meal so you'll be hearing a conversation people are sitting at a dinner table about a wonderful meal so two people Nawal and Fadwa of course will be talking about a wonderful a wonderful meal while they are sitting uh, at the uh, table. So this is the conversation here. Listen with your books closed. So close your books and just listen to the conversation and try to understand it as much as 
possible. So let's listen. Nawal, thank you so much for this wonderful meal. It must have taken all day to make such a phenomenal spread. Fadwa, my pleasure. It was no hassle at all. I whipped it up in no time. Nawal, you are quite the cook. I don't think I've ever had such a gourmet meal. Fadwa, I'm so glad you're enjoying it. Can I give you some more of the chicken? Nawal, oh, no thanks. I'm absolutely stuffed. Fadwa, would you like to try the grilled asparagus? Nawal, no, really, I couldn't possibly eat more. Fadwa, are you sure? Nawal, absolutely, honestly, I couldn't eat another bite. Fadwa, oh, that's a shame. I made two different desserts. One is a chocolate raspberry cake and the other is almond cream brulee. Nawal, did you say chocolate raspberry cake? Come to think of it, it's rude to turn down food, right? I'm sure I could fit in a bit of that. And maybe I'll have a bite of cream brulee as well. I have a sweet tooth, you know. So you notice here that Nawal changed her mind because she said she uh, she's stuffed, she's full, she can't eat another bite because she was offered a chicken and asparagus. But once Fadwa said that she wants to offer dessert here, Nawal uh, couldn't refuse. You can notice here. Did you say chocolate raspberry cake? Come to think of it, it's rude. It's rude. It's not polite. So rude means not polite. It's rude to turn down food, right? I'm sure I could fit in a bit of that. And maybe I'll have a bit of the uh, creme brulee as well. I have a sweet tooth, you know. I want to ask you about what's the meaning of sweet tooth, but we will learn about that uh, later in the real uh, talk. So name one food that was served at the dinner. Name one food that was served. What did uh, Fadwa serve at dinner? So she served chicken, very good, because she offered chicken to Nawal. What else? Yes, grilled asparagus. So these were the main dish, of course. What about the uh, dessert? Yes, chocolates and also a, the uh, creme, uh, the creme uh, brulee. So now we'll be listening again to the conversation, but now try to read along. So now open your books and listen to the conversation and try to read along as you are listening. So let's listen again. Nawal, thank you so much for this wonderful meal. It must have taken all day to make such a phenomenal spread. Fadwa, my pleasure. It was no hassle at all. I whipped it up in no time. Nawal, you are quite the cook. I don't think I've ever had such a gourmet meal. Fadwa, I'm so glad you're enjoying it. Can I give you some more of the chicken? Nawal, oh, no thanks. I'm absolutely stuffed. Fadwa, would you like to try the grilled asparagus? Nawal, no, really, I couldn't possibly eat more. Fadwa, are you sure? Nawal, absolutely, honestly, I couldn't eat another bite. So before we continue the conversation, the conversation, let's just learn some, uh, some of the few words here. We're beginning, Nawal, thank you so much for this wonderful meal. It must have been taken all day to make such a phenomenal spread. What does it mean here, the word phenomenal? when you describe something as phenomenal. So it means that you can find this every day, uh, in every place. Yes, so phenomenal is one of a kind, something that's extremely rare, something that doesn't happen all the time. Phenomenal, it means something is extremely rare. So phenomenal spread. Fadwa said, my pleasure, my pleasure. It was no hassle at all. No hassle, it means I didn't have any problem at all. I whipped it, I whipped it up in no time. Uh, Nawal replied, you're quite the cook. I, I don't think I've ever had such a gourmet meal. Fadwa, I'm so glad. I'm so glad here. So I'm so happy you're enjoying uh, it. Can I give you some more of the chicken? Oh no, thanks. I'm absolutely stuffed. Um, when you say stuffed here, 
it means when you say when you uh, when you're having dinner with someone and he says I'm stuffed it means that he is full that he ate too much now stuffed means full we'd like to try the grilled asparagus the grilled asparagus so here grilled this is one way of cooking to uh, grill something this is one way of cooking to grill something can you think of another way of course there is more than way to for cooking to yes to have barbecue to boil yes uh, and there are uh, of course more to that so uh, grilling the uh, barbecue uh, and also to uh, boil uh, but here we have grilled asparagus grilled asparagus no really I couldn't possibly eat more are you sure absolutely honestly I couldn't eat another bite so let's continue here with the uh, conversation the second part here Fadwa oh that's a shame I made two different desserts one is a chocolate raspberry cake and the other is almond cream brulee Noel did you say chocolate raspberry cake come to think of it it's rude to turn down food, right? I'm sure I could fit in a bit of that. And maybe I'll have a bite of cream brulee as well. I have a sweet tooth, you know. So here, let's read, it. Let's read this one bit by bit. Oh, that's a shame. I made two different desserts. So shame, it has many meanings here. When you say to someone shame on you, it means that he did something wrong. But, not, but it's not what it means here. When you say that's a shame, it means that I wanted to do this, but now I can't. Because she said here, because uh, Nawal said that she's full, Fadwa replied, oh, that's a shame. That's a shame. I wanted you to try more of my food. That's a shame that you can't try more. I made two different desserts. So this is one part of the meal. Well, this is one part of the meal. So the first part, uh, the, th the first part of the meal, is the uh, is the appetizers. You remember the appetizers. Then the second part is, yes, the main dish. Then you have the dessert. When you eat sweet things, of course. Uh, dessert one is a chocolate raspberry layer cake, and the other is almond creme brulee. Did you say chocolate raspberry cake? Come to think of it, it's rude. As I said before, rude means not polite. To turn down, to turn down food. What does it mean to turn down something? To turn down something. It means to say no. Yes, to, 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 to turn down something, it means to say no, right? I'm sure I could uh, fit in a bit of that and maybe I'll have a bite of the uh, creme brulee as well. I have a sweet tooth, you know. So what foods were mentioned in the conversation? I think this is an easy one. So what foods were mentioned in the conversation? Yes, chicken and also, very good, the grilled asparagus also chocolate raspberry layer cake and the last one yes very good the almond creme brulee so four foods were mentioned in the conversation chicken grilled chicken here the first one grilled asparagus chocolate raspberry layer cake and almond creme brulee the words creme brulee are actually french i think you can notice just from uh, pronouncing the uh, the food the uh, the dessert here creme brulee and also from the writing i think you can guess that it is french so the words creme brulee are actually french why do people often use french words to discuss cooking so this is an interesting question here why do people often use french words to discuss cooking why is that like creme brulee and some french words when they are talking about cooking so the answer here is in the western world france is famous for its cooking and great chefs so that's why many french words are used in uh, cookings or cooking books because uh, most of chefs are from france and they 
came up with many recipes for cooking. Again, in the Western world, France is famous for its cooking and great chefs. The second question, what does Nawal mean when she says the meal is phenomenal? I think we just answered this one. So the answer here is she means that it's uncommonly excellent. It is uncommonly excellent. We said that it's rare. It's one of a kind. It's uncommon to eat something like that. That's something extremely good. Again, the answer here, she means that it's uncommonly excellent. So the real talk here, spread an abundant meal laid out on a table. Spread means an abundant meal uh, laid out on a table, whipped it up because she said, no, it's no hassle. I whipped it up quickly, made it quickly and easily. When you whip something up, whip it up, it means that you made it quickly and easily. In no time, when you say I made it, I did it in no time, it means very quickly because there's no such thing as no time. It's just an expression. When you say in no time, it means very quickly. Quite the something. And here you write a profession. Quite the cook, because she said quite the cook. Very good at something. When you say to someone, you are quite the driver. It means that he is a very good driver. He is quite the player. It means that he's a very good player. So I, so quite the something, it means that he is very good at this thing. Again, quite the something, very good something. Come to think of it, something has just occurred to me. When you have something in your mind that has just occurred to you, you say, come to think of it, I don't want to go, for example. Something that has just occurred to me. Have a sweet tooth. Have a sweet tooth, it means that you love to eat sweet things, love desserts and candies. Maybe from the term itself, sweet tooth. Sweet tooth, it means you like to eat sweet things, love desserts and candy. So who said each word and why? The word here is spread. Who said the word spread and why? Yes, Nawal says this, indicating that Fadwa has prepared a lot of food. Nawal says this, indicating that Fadwa has prepared a lot of food. Whipped it up in no time. It's a no hassle. I whipped it up in no time. Who said this and why? So let's see the answer here. Fadwa says this, meaning that it didn't take her long to prepare the meal. Very good. Quite the cook. Quite the cook. I, can, I think this is an easy one. Nawal says this, talking about Fadwa, of course, meaning that Fadwa is a really good cook. Come to think of it. Who said come to think of it? Yes, Nawal says this to indicate that she's just realized that it would be rude not to have dessert. She's joking, of course, because she has just said that she was too full to have anything else. If you remember in the beginning, she was offered chicken and asparagus, and she said, no, I'm too full. But when Fadwa offered her uh, sweets, cake, and creme brulee, she said, come to think of it, I changed my mind. I'm not, uh, I'm not full. It's rude to turn down food. Of course, this is a joke. Have a sweet tooth. Have a sweet tooth. Of course, also Nawal says this, meaning that she likes sweet foods and can't resist the uh, dessert. About the conversation questions here, does Nawal assume Fadwa went to a lot of trouble to cook the meal? What does Nawal say? What foods did Fadwa prepare? What change of attitude does Nawal have? What causes this change? So we have three questions here. Does Nawal assume Fadwa went a lot? Does Nawal assume that Fadwa went to a lot of trouble to cook the meal? What does Nawal say? What foods? Did Fadwa prepare? What change of attitude does Nawal have? What causes this change? So I think the first question here, Nawal, uh, does Nawal assume Fadwa went to a lot of trouble to cook the meal? So the answer, of course, yes. She says it must have taken all day, if you remember, to make such a phenomenal 
meal. This is what she said because she says it must have taken all day to make such a phenomenal meal. What foods here? What foods did Fadwa prepare? What did she prepare, Fadwa? So Fadwa prepared chicken, grilled asparagus, chicken raspberry layer cake, and almond creme brulee. So pre she prepared four, uh, four foods. Number three, what change of attitude does Nawal have? What causes this change? She changed her mind or her attitude about something. And why did she uh, do that? What causes this change? So Nawal said something. She had an attitude about something. Then she changed this attitude. What did she change and why? Of course, she changed it as a joke, if you remember. So the answer here is first, she says she can't eat another bite. She is full. She is stuffed. But then she decides that she can eat more when she hears about the desserts because she, don't want, she didn't want to eat chicken or asparagus. She wants dessert. Here's a language builder. Point out the word bite as a noun can mean a small amount of food. When you, want, when you say, I just want a bite, the word bite, you know the, the word bite as a verb is to bite something with your teeth. But as a noun, when you say I'll have a bite, it means a small amount of food. It's often used when talking about eating as in the following examples. I don't want much. Just give me a bite, small portion here. We'll have a bite to eat before the show. I can't eat another bite. So bite as a noun, it means small amount of food. Your turn here, role play with a partner. Pretend you are hosting dinner for a family member, act out the meal, uh, act out the meal, the phrases from the box uh, for offering, accepting, and declining food and drink. So here are the offering, accepting, and declining food and drink. When you want to offer food or drink, or you, wa you want to decline the food or drink, or uh, and of course, to accept them. This, uh, this chart uh, will help you. Again, here, offering, accepting, and declining food and drink. Please help yourself too. Of course, this is offering here. When you're carrying, uh, when you're carrying, uh, some, for example, a tray with the food that you prepared, uh, you say here, for example, please help yourself to eat the food too. You name the food, maybe help, please help yourself to the chicken, for example. Would you like to try the Creme brulee, for example. Would you like to try the creme brulee, for example, here? Of course, we are still offering here. Can I give you some more? Can I give you some more? So also here's an offering. Can I give you some more? Thanks, I'd love a little some more. This is, of course, accepting now. You say thanks, I'd love a little. Or you say thanks, I'd love some more so here you are accepting declining here also no thank you thank you but i'm full for example i couldn't eat another bite just as she said i'm stuffed so all of these here you are declining the food here you are accepting thanks i'd love a little or you say some more here these three you are offering some food. Which expressions does Fadwa use in the uh, conversation? Of course, she used, can I give you some more of the chicken? Would you like to try the grilled asparagus? So she said, would you like to try the chicken? And also, would you like, uh, uh, can I give you some more of the uh, chicken? And with that, we reach the end of this lesson. See you next lesson, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfirka wa tubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum.